Hi and welcome to another episode of Making Things. Today I'll show you how you can use a 3D printer, turn it into a plotter that's capable of making double-sided PCB boards. Right. So I'm going to be building on my last instructable slash video where I turned my 3D printer into plotter. If you need the details on that, just uh, check out the link below. To recap, I designed a holder, uh, the files which I shared, and I made a few changes in the curve setting to specifically make a profile for drawing on th thin substrates like paper. The core of those changes was uh, no heat, no skirt, no supports, and a proper nozzle size setting of 1mm with a layer and shell thickness of 0.2mm, a proper STL files thickness of 0.2 millimeter to match those settings and an aggressive retraction and a z-hop setting so that the pen doesn't drag between segments. Now to get this working with the PCB or in this case the copper clad fiber board uh, we have a few extra challenges. The first being that it's a thicker substrate but also the fact that it's conductive. This can mess with the auto calibration that we use with the Cura profile we've created and we can't just adjust the holder because if we're going to be doing double sided boards we need to keep everything perfectly aligned which is why I've added a pos code M0 and an offset code M92. As usual for the nitty gritty of the coding stuff it's all written down in my instructables which is linked below. This will include design requirements for the PCB layouts um, but again briefly it's just using easy EDA to create the layout, export it as SVG file, convert that into a DXG file so that that can then be imported into SketchUp where it can be fixed up and saved as an STL. Uh, it's not as complicated as it sounded right there. Alright, back to the shop. Alright, attempt number two. Let's see what this will give. Yeah, it doesn't look... Oh, sorry about that. Got a little maker in training in his carrier here. Hello! Moving the camera. Mm. Yeah, no, that's still too, too high. So I have to adjust it blind because of the uh, sensor preventing the manual G-code from pushing the whole thing down, but not the end of the world. So in testing a new setting, I accidentally got it started. Uh, so I had to hold the copper board while I was printing. It's actually fairly sturdy. Didn't uh, didn't move too much, so actually didn't really move. So that's good. Um, but now I'm going to tape it down just before anything else happens. So now that I've got this, the next step is going to be to um, I'm actually going to pre-drill the holes just so I can align everything. And what's going to happen is I'm going to once again print the design onto the tape before printing it on the PCB. So I'm just pre-printing on the tape once so that when I put the copper board I know exactly where it's going to be printing and so everything can be perfectly lined up. Uh, for, for this I do have to slice two versions. The first one is for the tape and the second one is for the copper. Uh, very minor differences but again all that is specified uh, in the code provided on my link below. This is absolutely fascinating. that we can do this at home. Amazing. Moment of truth. Ooh. All right. Oh, that's just the edge. Starting okay. Ooh. Yeah, so catching that edge, it's not like that, but yeah, that moved it over. That's not good. Yeah, so instead of making holes through the board and lining it up, I think I'm gonna have to start making my designs with uh, just a larger contour and some reference points that don't get anywhere near any of the traces. So the idea is good. I mean, the the it works in, in you know in principle, and um, certainly the the etching quality is going to be great on this. Uh, but it's going to require a little bit of fine tuning on the method there. 
So I drilled a few of the component holes just to see how it turned out and uh, unfortunately it is uh, way too offset. Um, it moved too much so you can see. There you go, you can see those three holes here. They're supposed to be of course within the trace. On the other side they're perfectly lined up so Close but no cookie. But the solution is really easy. Uh, at least I know it. It's just, you know, I'm going to make like a reference hole in the corner here and another one in the corner out there. And that'll be it. Uh, it'll be enough to line everything up. So, so, so just a quick look at version two of this. Um, I've got some extra circles here in the corner. So I'll be able to easily drill through that and line it all up when I'm doing the second side to avoid the issue of snagging uh, I had earlier. I won't go through all of this again, the rest of the video is still good, it's just that this has changed. Alright, so with the two holes drilled, we can see that in order to correctly match the faces, it has to go you know, in this direction. So we're going to put it over, line up the holes. This is a little hard to see from the camera's vantage point, but I have to do it until I see the black circles, make sure I see them properly, and then move it to where I no longer see the black circles. go second side done and now the moment in truth will be when I start drilling the holes through to see if it's properly lined up so this time to try and avoid wasting the board like I did here by making large holes um, that made the sharpie snag when I was trying to print over uh, I just made a tiny hole in the center of one of the big holes just to make sure that it was properly aligned and sure enough it's not uh, here you can see it's pretty much centered and on its other side it's really close to the edge so the print is slightly offset so I'm gonna redo this one spray down with some uh, alcohol and uh, just you know reprint one of the sides so that's not a big deal so what I've done is I have those two reference points to make the gross adjustment so it's pretty close to being perfectly lined up but in those other holes uh, I just made tiny little holes uh, so the tip is not supposed to go close to them so it's not going to mess with the print and what I do is I can see that it's not properly centered so it needs to be scooted over over a bit and uh, that's what I'm going to do and that's that's how that's how I'm going to line it up and there you go you can see that in the next two 132nd holes are perfectly centered or it's close enough um, as good as they are on the other side essentially and the only part that's going to be affected really is the initial one. Uh, this is really matter because it's a very large pad. And so there's a little bit of uh, copper that won't be etched out where the hole's supposed to be. But again, that doesn't matter because I'm going to pre-drill before I go ahead and uh, etch it anyway. So uh, it's all the same for that. Now when I start making the holes, before I actually do all the big holes, I'm going to make the small ones. Because if they are uh, too far off, again, I'm going to erase it. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand down the edges to make sure that it's fine. But really with, uh, you know, two gross reference points and five uh, fine refer reference points, I, this is clearly, this board is clearly properly aligned, so it really shouldn't be an issue. Alright, so I'm done drilling the holes. Um, the holes for the components, you can see here I moved it over, I don't really, don't really care. Um, it's not a big deal because there's nothing else around it, but it, some of them are going to be too small. Uh, so the MOSFETs and the LM317, they have start slightly larger pins, so I'm going to have to enlarge on this a bit later. Um, but uh, one thirty second is good for most of the other components. Uh, so that's what I'm going with. Uh, I didn't bo bother deburring either because I just risked scratching off the uh, protective cover. 
and really it's just going to etch away anyways and if not I can just remove it after, I really don't care. Uh, so in the process of doing this I did you know, scratch up a few things so I'm just going to go in and touch it up. I got lint on this. I think it lint on a new Sharpie. There you go. All right, got tired of waiting, so got out my uh, beater pot and put some hot water in it. Yeah, that's gonna be good to go. Keep this to rinse off the part later. I'm doing this with ferric chloride, uh, just because I have it. I've had it for quite a while actually. I reuse it, so I mean the bottle lasts pretty much forever. Uh, at least at the usage rate I'm going through. But this stuff is actually uh, pretty nasty and hard to get rid of. You can't just drain it. So if you don't have anything, uh, you can look into that peroxide type mix I've seen going around. Apparently it works pretty, pretty well. Uh, I've never tried it myself, but you know. If you want a ready-made solution, then that solution is still ferric chloride. That plastic uh, tweezers as well, but I can't find them, so... Little scissory things it is. All right, back. So, I will use a bit of a isopropyl alcohol, spray off this stuff. There you go. It's a pretty good looking PCB once I get all of the rest of that ink off. There you have it, properly aligned double-sided PCB board. Uh, if you're curious about what this is for, it's going to be for a voltage regulator for a power supply I'm going to be building. Um, a pretty heavy duty one actually. So if you're interested in that, check out my, my other stuff. It's going to be coming out in pieces over the coming months as I develop it. Um, if this was helpful to you, please like, subscribe, leave some comments, feedback. Check out my other stuff. Have a good day.